Howdy heretics, if you're among my 144,000 subscribers, you know that I used to be a happy Jehovah Witness, then I was an angry and frustrated apostate, and now I'm a happy apostate. And I'm much more happy than I thought it was possible for a human being to be. And that's fascinating because I used to be a Jehovah Witness. And I used to be 100% certain that I had an invisible friend, and as long as I did the following things, and avoid the following things, and I maneuver this, I would be happy. And you get this kind of happiness from that, because when you practice something, you get good at it. And when you get good at something, you feel good about yourself. So yes, I was happy. But then, when you, became, when you realize that religion is not true, then you get a fear response, and you try to avoid it, and you think, you associate the feeling of doubting your faith with unhappiness. You think, I have to avoid that. And Jehovah Witnesses will kind of instill fear and say, that's how it is in the world of Satan. So most Jehovah Witnesses, when they feel something that doesn't conform with their faith, they will avoid it because it's painful. But actually it's not painful. Losing my faith was the best thing that ever could happen to me. And I want to show you a funny scripture that you find funny and we can laugh about it. But first, I would just like to point out, when I was a Jehovah Witness, they told me that if you do the following things, then you make Jehovah happy. And then you will be happy. And I did the following things. And then my invisible friends friend were happy. And I felt happy. In retrospect, I would say that it shouldn't be my job to regulate his emotions. And if you meet someone that say that it's not your job to regulate his emotions, that is a person that makes Jehovah sad. And when Jehovah is sad, he will kill the person who makes him sad. But I'll take my chances because I have this book that give me faith and strengthen my faith. Please listen to me. I will show you the best chapter of all. Because Jehovah Witnesses have a lot of fear. So when they read a story here that challenge their faith, their instinct will be to turn it off, turn it off, because they think it's painful. But actually, to let go of the notion that you have to make someone in the universe happy all the time, when you let that go, you feel happy because you're happy. If he exists or doesn't exist, doesn't really matter. He is old enough to regulate his own emotions. I will repeat that. He is old enough to regulate his own emotions. But, according to this book, he is not. So I will show you my favorite chapter. You remember when we were Jehovah Witnesses, they would always say, Remember the wife of Lot. And this would give us a feeling that, Oh no, oh no, I must do everything correctly. If I do one mistake, like building this farm, when I was a Jehovah Witness, I bought this crappy house and I'm still fixing it and I'm finding joy in that. I'm building my own paradise. But Jehovah Witnesses went, remember the wife of Lot. Yeah, let's talk about that. The wife of Lot. The wife of Lot was, first and foremost, a woman in a house. And when a woman live in a house, they make it nice. They put up some drapes. I don't know what they did in back then, but I'm pretty sure she put a lot of hard work into making it nice and they always get angry if you bring the chainsaw in to the living room stuff like that so according to this book there was a woman called we don't know her name because she's female and it really doesn't count there was a woman with the name wife of lot he was important she was not but at one point there came two angels that conveniently had appear in very beautiful male bodies, and they were in Sodom. They could have come as spirit beings, but they came materialized in physical bodies to Sodom. And they told her that we will ruin your house. All the lovely things you put everywhere, we will ruin it. We will ruin the patio, we'll ruin the living room, we'll ruin the roof, everything. 
and we will kill the neighbor, and the neighbor's neighbor, the neighbor's neighbor, and maybe she asks question, what about the nice lady in the mall that do my nails? That we will kill her too, and her children, because this town has homosexuals. So, God would kill all the homosexuals, all the homosexuals' wives, all the homosexuals' women, and they would destroy her living room. And she said, okay. <laughs> she said, okay. And then when they left, she committed the crime of looking in the wrong direction. So she was obviously a terrible person. So when Jehovah Witnesses mention this all the time, they create this fear that, oh, you do one mistake and it's gone. Well, I like to think about this story again. It starts with two angels that came to Abraham. Abraham was a righteous man that would never put his penis in another man's anus. So the angels came to him. They were in material, physical bodies like me. They were perfect physical body. And Abraham offered them to stay the night. First they haggle a little with them and say, maybe you wouldn't kill them if there were 10 righteous. And they say, we will not kill if, if there's 10 righteous. Imagine if you are some kind of study circle, you sit down, you read the Bible and you say, I'm reading the Bible. We're learning so much from the Bible. How many came to the meeting today? Nine. Nine. That's a nice number. The next day, God will kill everyone on this service group because you were only nine. You should have been ten. Anyway, so <laughs> nine righteous men in Sodom doesn't count. The magic number is ten. So the angels came to Abraham, told Abraham that those people in Sodom are doing uh, uh, uh. the same as my goats do, by the way. But that's unnatural. So the angels said they would kill everyone in Sodom. And the righteous servant of God, Abraham, said, would you like to stay here for the night? And they looked at Abraham and they looked at each other and they said, nah, we'll go to Sodom a last night. So they could spend one night with a righteous man called Abraham, who was a friend of God, but they would prefer spending a last night in Sodom with materialized bodies. So they went to Sodom and they went to the town square and they sat there waiting for someone to invite them home to stay with them. I'm not kidding. This is in the Bible, straight in front of our eyes. There were angels that came down to kill everyone in Sodom, and they thought, let's put on a human body and stay one night with the wicked people before we kill them. And what can we learn from this story? Well, there was a woman with no other name than the wife of Lot that was murdered for the crime that I'm going to do now in a shameless manner. Did you see that? Remember the wife of Lot? She was looking in the wrong direction. So, how do you find happiness when you leave the cult? Well, I think one thing, good thing is humor. It's so ridiculous what I used to believe. So it's liberating to talk to you guys about it. And, well, it's not your job to regulate my emotions, but if you leave a like and a comment, I will be 1% more happy today. But the other 99% comes from basically being free. Because when we avoid knowledge because we get scared, well, who put that scare in us? Who wrote this terrible, terrible, scary book and let children read it, where people get slaughtered for just looking in the right direction? It's highly unreasonable by God to kill someone for looking in the wrong direction. So my wife is nine and a half months pregnant and I'm fixing the house. She's not happy, but I can't kill her. <laughs> uh, 
he's a crazy god, he's an unreasonable and terrible person, and then I would be in charge of his feelings. Well, for a while it felt good, because when you practice something you get good at it, but then when you practice being nice to yourself, you get good at that and you feel good. And then, if you're a Jehovah Witness, when I said being nice to yourself, you get a fear reaction. You feel like, oh, you're not supposed to be right, uh, good do feel good about yourself. You're not supposed to be selfish and do nice things for yourself. Well, I would like to ask you a question. Who told you that you shouldn't be nice to yourself? Is it the same person that said that you should do nice things to Jehovah? And do you agree with me that there's a qu big coincidence here? Because the thing that makes Jehovah happy is the thing that directly benefit the Watchtower printing company, aka the governing body, because they say that you should not be selfish, you should do things that makes Jehovah happy, and what makes Jehovah happy benefits them. So maybe there's a little bit of a conspiracy here, but if you want to be happy, listen to this book. I will make more chapters, because the truth has been in front of us all the time, and we didn't see it. I remember my aunt, she's a pioneer, and she's the kind of pioneer that managed to recruit people. She's a super pioneer. And she had this crisis of faith, because the Bible is supposed to be the most accurate book on the, on the planet. It's written by God, the expert of science. He wrote the book. And there was this guy that built a boat, and they took two animals of each kind. And when they translate the Bible into modern English or Norwegian, they will still translate it into kind. They could translate it into species, or subspecies, or breeds, or any scientifically correct term, but they don't. Because if they would say two of each species, well then any biologist with a calculator could say, this doesn't make sense. You translate it into subspecies, the same. Any biologist could say, this can be proven wrong. So, the Watchtower's translation, New World Translation, or any translation of the Bible, prefer to use the word kind, two of each kind. What's that, what does that mean? We don't know, but therefore no one can say we're wrong, obviously. It must mean species or subspecies. Species. So a correct translation would be to call a biologist and say, hello, I'm translating the most accurate book in the on the planet to modern day in English. What should I use here? Subspecies or species? And he will look and say, two of each kind? Well, that's obviously subspecies. <laughs> it would be possible to translate into something that makes sense. But if you're a Jehovah Witness, your faith is depending on the most accurate book on the planet being non-specific when it comes to science. And by the way, I will tell you one thing. The Earth is not a circle. Let me repeat that. Earth is not a circle. It's not. <laughs> anyway, my aunt, I'll tell you the story about my aunt. She's a super pioneer. She's still a Jehovah Witness. And if you believe that a 600-year-old man with Bronze Age technology built one of the world's biggest boats and took two of each kind, most people that believe in this mythology would say that, well, obviously he didn't take both African elephants and Indian elephants. That's their favorite example. You don't need such a big arts because you don't need all the elephants. You just need African. You don't need both African and Indian. And then one day she realized there's no way for the African elephant to go to India. If there were only African elephants and due to evolution, some of them turned to Indian elephants, how did they get to India? There's no way they can't go, they can't swim that far and they can't go over the Himalaya. So this was a faith crisis for her, and she studied and studied and studied and studied, and she felt what she described as 
a depression. And then she decided never to think about it again. And she's a happy Jehovah Witness now. She doesn't talk to me. There's a lot of family members they don't talk to. But still, she's standing on the street with uh, one of those cards that say how to have a happy family life. Because in her mind, she believes the only way to be happy is to follow the rules and regulations. Don't do this, do that. Don't do this, do that. Don't be nice to yourself. Jehovah will be happy if you regulate his feelings. If you don't regulate his feelings, he will be sad and that's dangerous. So I kind of feel sorry for them. But can we help them? No. But once a while we can go on to Goat Like Personality and see the crazy chapters I find. Because I think while we're moving on, we should just allow ourselves to laugh at the ridiculous ideas we used to believe in. <laughs> Angels from God wanted to murder everyone in the city because some of them had the butt sex. How did they know? They've been watching. You know, it's like TV. If you don't like this channel, change the channel. But what were they doing? They were watching Sodom 24-7 until they decided, mm, maybe we should go down there. Why? To kill them? Not the first day. <laughs> the second day. <laughs> oh, it's so crazy. Anyway. This is my farm. This is my paradise. Build your paradise. Happiness come from within. See you.